Hey there, everyone. I'm Chef Dennis, and welcome to the second session of the second annual Virtual Bloggers Conference. Well, we're bringing you a lot of great content today, and we already had one great show. And <laughs> there's Ryan holding up. Hold it back up again, brother. Put that sign That's up. my favorite thing you do. <laughs> plus one. That's right. You've got a plus one it. So anyway, we're here with a great panel today, and we're going to bring you a topic. Uh, a lot of people think that it's either extremely difficult or extremely easy to, to be a Hangout on Air host. And I personally don't think either one of them is right. There's some tricks and tips to doing it, uh, and there's some middle ground that you should know about to get started and, and things that are important, but it's a great brand builder. And I have three very successful Hangout on Air hosts with us today, and they're going to share some of their tips, tricks, strategies, and uh, magic that they work to make uh, Hangouts work for them and build their brand and make their brand more present. So let's jump right into this and say hello to everyone and then we'll come back and let them each talk a little bit. So Ryan, you are uh, to my left, so we're going to start with you. So thanks for coming on today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Chef. Um, huge honor to be back for the second year in the conference. Um, groundbreaking stuff. Uh, Excited for our panelists. We had that little pre pre chat uh, yesterday, and uh, hopefully we didn't waste all our magic um, <laughs> Friday, Friday afternoon. Well, you had Duke with you too. It was nice to see him. Yes, yeah, yeah. He won't be here today, unfortunately. And, well, and thank you for uh, taking the time out of your weekend where you should be spending time with your son and coming on with us. I really appreciate that. Well, my pleasure. All right, Mia, my sister Thelma, how you doing? Hi, Brother Luis. How are you? Good. You got all nice and pretty for us this morning. I oh. did. I, I I dolled up for you guys. Oh. I know Jeff C did as well, so I I thank him for that. Actually, he has he has groomed his beard since yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I did it for you. And, and that yeah. is an awesome beard, Jeff. He really is. I fear yeah. it. I do. So fear the know. beard? I fear the beard. That's right. But not Jeff C. No. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, though. I'm excited. Good work on uh, on putting this all together, Sheffy. Thank you, Mia. It's it's a, a fun thing to do. I have a lot of blogger friends that never get to travel for one reason or other. You know, it's expensive, or just sometimes time is the is the thing that stops us from really being able to get out. So uh, this way, you can watch this conference. You see a lot of great people, a lot of uh, very knowledgeable people speaking, and you can watch it in your jammies. There's no hotel fee, there's no airport fee, there's no uh, lunch money, you can snack while you watch, so it's it's a win-win for everyone, so uh, thank you for being here. And uh, now to my brother Jeff C. from the Manly Show, and uh, thanks for being here today and taking some time out. Well, thanks, man. I, 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 I am just blown away um, from being asked to be on this conference, and this and, and going into the power of branding and, and uh, hangouts is the only reason that I'm on this panel is because of doing hangouts and I you know this is about less than a year I've been doing uh, my show and I'm on with Mia Voss, Chef Dennis and Ryan Hanley I mean it's just amazing so I mean that's I think a testament to how cool these uh, and important hangouts can be for your brand absolutely absolutely yeah and, and none of us have ever met in person so hopefully one day that will change that's but... not true uh, <clears throat> Mia oh, and I have IRL'd before uh, and that leads me to Ryan Hanley, he's taller than you think. That's tall. Yep. Yeah. I have heard that. So, well, I'm <laughs> glad to hear here that you two have IRL. Uh, we have IRL. We're yeah. just curling here uh, yeah. virtually. It's a uh, what we what did I call it? I forgot now. The, the, <laughs> well, I know you like taking bussies. Bussies, yeah. Gonna, and I'm going to take one right now for uh, for Instagram. So, how about that? Sounds good. Take a bussy. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so let's get let's get started here. We got some uh, people in the house here. Let's call them out real quick. Uh, Dustin Stat is here. Jesse, I just referred to you as Mega Beard in my share of the event. I love it. <laughs> Kim uh, Boltman is here. It's Magic Morning. Thanks and uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, Roxanne uh, Davenport is saying hello. Mike uh, Alton. Hi, yeah. brother Mike. Mike Alton is here, Chantel is here from uh, Ontario, and uh, Laura Williams is here. We've got a lot of a lot of fun people here today. So, Nazim. Really Nazim. cool uh, geographic yeah. footprint we have on the show today. Everyone's yeah. checking in from where they're located, and we got a we got a big breath here geographically. 
Yeah. yeah. And Nazim's watching the Brazil game, so that's good. Yeah, we do. We're uh, we're kind of represented. Uh, Ryan, you're in uh, upstate New York. Upstate New York. That's right. Me is in Denver, and Jeff is in the great state of Texas. Right, East Texas. Yep. And I am in Florida, where it's sunny and hot. And it's going to rain later, and that's just the way it is. So. And your lawn guy is there. <laughs> you know, he is a really good lawn guy, but boy, he's loud. And not only do they cut the lawn, then they edge the lawn, and then they blow everything away. So, and it, it's 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 a great service, and he's inexpensive, but boy, oh boy, is he loud. <laughs> the life of Sheffy. I know it's a rough life. So anyway, let's dig into this and get started. And uh, we're going to start with Ryan. Uh, since he is directly to my side, and we're just going to keep moving across the way we were, and let's talk a little bit about uh, your strategies and ideas for using Hangouts on Air to help you brand. Yeah, so one of the interesting things about Hangouts for me is that uh, my Hangout was actually a genesis of an audio-only kind of traditional style podcast that I had. So <laughs> I, I actually did the first 60 episodes of Content Warfare were you know, just on iTunes and Stitcher, it was audio only. I recorded through a Skype call and, and used Audacity to just produce a an audio only podcast that you would think in the very traditional sense. Um, and, you know, I started to get invited from, from being on Google Plus and loving this platform so much, I started to get invited to shows uh, like Mia's and a couple others and just, and just doing some private hangouts and seeing where this platform is going and what's possible and said, there's no reason why uh, Hangout couldn't be the, the the body or the content for a podcast. And uh, I tried doing it actually for the very first time with Ronnie Bincer. We did it over the summer of 2013. And the only drawback at that time was that the audio capture on YouTube of Hangouts was poor at best. Uh, very lo-fi, uh, very scratchy. It would cut in and out. It, it wasn't very good. And Mia probably knows this from from doing uh, kind of being in Hangouts for so long. She's probably seen the evolution of how it's captured in YouTube, uh, and just transferring that over to a podcast uh, did, didn't work. So I stopped. I didn't do it again. And then in the later fall of 2013, the 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 audio capture between Hangouts and YouTube drastically increased. It went from lo-fi to hi-fi, and 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 really a, a nice capture. Not perfect, but but more than enough high quality. And at that time, I said, let's make the move. And since episode 61, uh, I just recorded episode 88, so about 27 episodes now have been done. Google Hangout, capture, record, and then strip and turn into a podcast. And uh, it's been an amazing experience. My, my downloads on the audio podcast have grown 108% month over month since the day I started capturing them as a Google Hangout versus doing Skype only. It's amazing. I had a quick question for you, Ryan. When you made that transition from, you know, just having no eyes on you at all, was that a little tough to, to all of a sudden be, you know, first of all, you have to get used to looking at the camera. We are joking with Nazim about that yesterday. I was like, honey, you got to look at the camera. He's like, oh, for an hour. I'm like, welcome to my world every week. You yeah. have to get used I, to that. Oh, so that's a very good question. Um, so my very first guest I had was John Lee Dumas, who uh, oh, popular Entrepreneur on Fire podcast. And he, so my first one, he was kept saying to me over and over, hey, look at the camera. Because, <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm used to looking all over. You know, you're just listening to people. Sometimes I would close my eyes when I was listening to them so I could really focus on what they were saying. And when you're doing that on camera, it just doesn't work. So You look like I'm, Rain Man. <laughs> yeah, yes, people are like, why does he have his eyes closed right now? Um, but I will say that it took practice. I'm still not great at it. And really, I try not to let staring at the camera take away from the conversation. So I'm not the best at it, but it was definitely. Plus, managing the comments is an incredibly difficult. Sure. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I didn't Interesting. Do, I didn't do comment tracker for the first five shows because I didn't want to worry about it. I was so scared of it. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing if we're going to jump into tips that I do with any of my guests because they get kind of excited and they'll come on and say, oh, hey, I want to try that. And it's usually, you know, like five minutes before the show starts. And I'm like, eh, nope, you need to focus. <laughs> like, that's my job. Like, you you just stay on that because they, they think they think it seems easy. And I'm like, nope, you need to focus on that. I'll, I'll bat it to you. You'll be fine. There's definitely a skill there in, in being able to kind of listen to what you're – 
person is saying, you know, whoever you're interviewing, whatever conversation is going, and take a quick glance at the comments. And that's where things like, I mean, I guess we could get into this in a little later, some of the technical stuff, but using like pins and stuff like that to, mm -hmm. you know, to come back to comments. And sometimes your guests just go off on really boring kind of rambles and you can tone them out for a minute and look, <laughs> I'm just playing. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that never happens. focus in on the comments for a minute and then come back. To Don't let them see behind the curtain, Ryan, with that yeah. comment. Now they and know. Keep going like this, right? Jeff, what's your move? Or you just kind of keep nodding? Yeah, the bobblehead move. The bobblehead. Yeah, in case you were wondering what that picture was I posted yesterday, it actually looked like Jeff was falling asleep, but he said that's what he was going to just, we just want to get a continual loop of Jeff going. Yeah, that's perfect. I wish I could just pop that up on my screen sometimes so I can like look over here at the comments and it will just be Jeff bobbing and said, yes, look, I, I promise I'm listening to you even though I'm not. Yeah, exactly. Right. Are we just to have that as a Jeff C agrees and then go right to that moving gift. <laughs> there you go. And I, I still think a series of uh, bobbleheads for HOA hosts would be a wonderful thing. I, I would love to see a Mia Voss bobblehead as well. <laughs> then I'd have a normal size head because my head's really tiny. <laughs> I look, I look I scale. True, well, there's nothing wrong with a little head, so don't worry. No. <laughs> I told you guys, Chef says stuff and then I laugh. That's it. So, no, we got a plus one on that too. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Ryan has given us hints and insights. Let's move over to my sister Thelma. Then, Mia, tell us, tell us about uh, how you use it to brand and what your thoughts on that are. Well, I, I did a uh, last year. I did this this uh, presentation for Junior Achievement, and I had to uh, go and talk to like 500 high school kids and think up some cool stuff, right? So I was like, what am I? And I finally realized my title is Accidental Entrepreneur. Like anything that's come into my life has just been accidentally like, oh, man, you know, that sounds like a good idea or, or you know, worlds collide and, you know, even my building inspection business. And um, same thing with, with Hangouts. It was just really accidental of, of seeing, um, you've heard me tell this story, Shauna Coronado, who I just love. She's been on my show a couple times. She's the, the gardening gal out of Chicago. And she had done, I'd seen her at a TEDx here in Denver. And then I went and checked her out. And she had on her website this Google Hangout. I use it like when it was new. Google Hangout. And she interviewed Chris Brogan. And I was like, that's it. Like, that's the way to do it. Like, instead of, you know, because I had this radio show. And I was driving all over. And, and you know, I, I was very, I can't stand uh, constraints. So I was like, I had to, you know, do these advertising and all this. And I my message got lost. I was like, I'm going to do Google Hangout. So that's how I started with more of an interview show like Ryan's style. Have you found it's really helped your presence? Well, you know, I, I, I started on Google Plus and didn't know anyone. So it really was a tough journey. The last year, starting in 2000, March of 2013, I just stuck with it. I, I, I always use the analogy, I felt like a new kid, a kid at a new school, and you're sitting in the lunchroom at that one table by yourself for a while eating lunch, like no friends and nobody's really talking, but I just sort of persevered and kept doing the show and then um, came up with the idea of the, the power chat. Um, from hanging out with a couple girlfriends of mine. This was back when I was focusing more on social media. And we'd had this private hangout where we were just dishing on stuff. Dishing on stupid we'd seen online. I thought, let's do a show where we just sit around a dish on, you know, what's good and bad. And then it kind of evolved and, um, and turned into the panel thing. But again, that was, that was tough because really nobody was doing that at all. And certainly not in that goofy, you know, crown-wearing, clapping, bat crap crazy kind of style. So it took a while to do it, but but it was about the engagement. So it was really about me going out, watching shows that I like, engaging, and then getting the audience to come over and then talk talk to each other. I love it when they talk to each other. That's the best. That That is one of the best parts about the Hangouts. And the reason I, I don't use the... Uh the uh, Q&A app is because you kind of lose that interaction and it's great to, to see the engagement mm -hmm. between people and that really gives them yes. another reason to come. That's, I think that's for bigger brands. I kind of mock the Q&A and app a bit. That's just not our style at all. Well, now, I think the cool thing now with the comments are coming up with the picture that's being branded. Oh, uh, right? That's, that's huge. I mean, now people on YouTube watching it later, they'll have their... I mean, so I think it's going to drive people to make comments more and want to participate in the show more. That's just my two cents on the... The new Can I ask a follow-up question to some of the stuff that you said? Yes. Sorry, the interview host is coming out of me now. Um, no. So you were talking a little bit about going from doing interviews to doing panels. Uh -huh. I would love to hear 
more about that transition and hear about how you manage that panel because I've seen panels. Panels can be done. Panels can be awful to watch. I mean, I've seen Hangouts where you're just like, oh my god, it's just a mess. But you it's hate really, <laughs> yeah, like you know what I mean? Just everyone's talking over each other and like yeah. ideas are just thrown out there, and then everyone starts. You know, it can be really bad. And you yeah. seem to keep a good flow, and obviously from the participation that you get from your audience, people really enjoy the way you do it. So what do you think some of the tactics are or ideas if someone wants to do a panel? Because I think there are a few people that do it as well as you do. Um, thank you so much. I, I did. It was a little bit of a transition. When I started off, though, I started off with friends um, and really small, so like maybe two or three people. The most I've done, I think, is... I think that publishing one I did was eight, and that was a little that that one was a little crazy. It was great, um, uh, but I think it's a lot about prepping your guests beforehand. So I do a lot of prep work. I, I set up a um, I set up a separate event and invite everybody to it so they can start conversing with each other privately beforehand. Um, so so they get to know each other then. And then I do a lot of coaching of, of I let people know we open the chat. So these are kind of technical things, so hopefully this will help. But I, it's it really is a lot of prep work beforehand. And then it, it is a lot of, of listening. It's a balance though. I've I've had to um I've had to come in on a couple people of like, okay, honey, like you know, the little cane. <laughs> I just you sort of you sort of break into it, but it really is about coaching beforehand. And I tell a lot of people like watch the the group chat that's in here. You guys, if you've ever been on a hangout, you'll see up there. And then you know you mute yourself and you you talk to one another that way of like hey you know adjust your sound or hey we're coming up and I bumper them in. So I really do a lot of um, herding, h e r d i n g and uh, coaching. Or like uh, on that publishing one when you yelled at me because I wouldn't let that one woman talk because I kept coming back in with new ideas. No, and I got actually a, what I wrote in the comments is like, you're going to get a spanking. <laughs> yeah, I got a private <laughs> chat hand slap in the comments of like, You know Stop what, but talking. that was what was great. I mean, I'd rather have that. You're, it's, you're, you're, didn't you think that was fun? Everybody got yes. so excited. I mean, you know, the, the hard thing is there's a couple people that didn't get in, but it wasn't, you know, it was just we all got so excited about it. And then what's great about that is that you sort of, you don't want to dog shame, you know how we were using that in the green room. I love that phrase, dog shaming. If you've never seen dog shaming, you guys go look it up because it's funny. Um, but you want to you you want to give everybody a comfort level, but then kind of make it funny. So I just make jokes out of stuff. Yeah, that's right? a good way to do it. Let me uh, shout out a few people here. We have uh, Kim Boltman, the Mia bobblehead comes with a tiara, batteries not included. <laughs> love it. <laughs> Gotta love it, uh, Lena. <laughs> is here. Where is it? Uh, hang out from Bel Air, Maryland. Thanks to me, a boss. Reminded me to put this on, put on my tiara, my crown, my wisdom, my sparkly <laughs> self. What are the batteries for in the Mia Baba? I, I don't know. That's what made me laugh. Well, wait, I, I left that one alone. <laughs> yeah, I do, but I like it. And hi, Elaine. That was sweet, honey. Thank you. Yeah, be yourself because there's nobody else like it. Lila Martin is here. A great analogy of a new kid at school. Fits perfectly. And uh, Roxanne had a question. I'm going to just throw it up here. Do you think people from Twitter will like podcasts, uh, but my blog will be a personal story, not an interview? And you can learn more about that when Ryan's on the podcasting session in just right. a while. Yes. So, you know, I, don't, that, by the way. I don't uh, exactly understand. I saw that question, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure what Roxanne is asking. Do I think people will listen to the podcast from Twitter or that Twitter – people are interested, or a podcast about Twitter. I guess, uh, Roxanne, if you can put that, just a little clarification in your in the event stream, and I'm happy to answer that question, or even at the 4 o'clock show, but I just wasn't 100% clear on that question, just so I can answer it the best way. Sounds good. And then um, Nazim had a question. He goes, a question for the panel. Tips on pushing your brand page and HOAs derived from there as opposed to a profile. Anyone like to handle it? Go ahead. Um, yeah, I had to switch. So I started, um, and I'm sorry my lighting's so weird. I'm still getting used to my new house. Like I, I feel like ha I feel like half my face is lit, but you gotta love me. You gotta love me in my hot mess. Um, you know, I, I started off really pushing. Like when I was on over on the F word, <laughs> Facebook. Um, you know, if I have the Mia Connect over there, and then I started to bring it over to Google, and then Ronnie Vincer actually had to help me because my YouTube channel was attached to. The Mia Connect, and I realized like it's it's Mia Voss. Everything is kind of 
the Mia Connect's a little separate. I'm still kind of working on that, but I've really moved it away from that. But when you do decide to do your show, you really do need to think long, long and hard with an exit, not an exit strategy, but a long-term strategy. Is it going to be you as the brand or the, a brand name as a brand, like yeah. a corporate type of thing? Because Ryan, I mean, you've, you've, it's Ryan Hanley, right? Yeah, this is a really hard one for me, um, and I'm not, I don't, I have a lot of things maybe that you shouldn't do and not a lot of things that you should, because I feel like I've made a lot of mistakes here. I've always done the Hangout on Ryan as my personal profile. Um, I have a page, a branded page for Content Warfare, and I kind of wish now that the Content Warfare show was run off of the brand page. And the reason being is I have ideas for other things I'd like to do, other shows, um, I, you know, and this week I actually am starting my own content marketing agency. I'm moving out of my current role, and and that has its own name too, Hanley Media, right? So I'm excited about this. Mm -hmm. and so now I have this other brand that I have to manage as well. Uh, so for now, I'm keeping it all under my personal profile. I wish I had done a little more thinking about the future, as as Mia said, and then maybe I would have set it up a little different so that the shows. We're just run off. We're just run through the brand page, and then I could use the Ryan Hanley personal profile, my personal profile, to do these other projects as well. So, um, I guess the question is really, what is your long-term strategy, and then you, right. that will help you drill down to where you want them to run off of. Can I can I jump in on that again? See, now I'm going to be that girl. <laughs> I, I think chat. What, exactly. Well, first of all, this is for you on your new change, Ryan. I'm so excited for you. I said Thank that yesterday. Um, but I think also that you guys, if you're building it, if you're building your name really well, then here, and maybe this is like a little bit of a consolation for it, then people are going to go, like it'll just be Ryan Hanley, and then they'll go to whatever is underneath that umbrella, whether that's going to be the, the, the media group, the content marketing, or the content warfare. Do you know what I mean? It's just going to be yeah. little branches. So it's like you as the brand of your programming, and you've got your little network that's your name because think about that. You guys think about when you, when you they're going to go look up Ryan Hanley and then see all your stuff. They're going to look up Jeff C and see the Manly show or the his design and all that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Or the fabulous uh, chef. You know, yeah. yeah, it really does run off personal brand a lot, I think, for a lot of people because if you have these different projects, there really needs to be one starting point. And that's what I ultimately decided with my web presence and getting my site redesigned was that I would keep the RyanHanley.com over brand. You know, brand is the as the over and then all the services slash projects underneath that and I th I think if you I think it's a good way to go you know it depends on how you're gonna scale and stuff I it's a really tough question they're probably smarter branding people out there than me that would have a better response to that <laughs> did you I'm see sorry, what I just, did? just sent a, a note to Jeff will you please shut up so uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm well, just that, doing no, let's go to Jeff because Jeff has just been the bomb <laughs> sorry about. Jeff I'm sorry no, no, we both did. <laughs> Know, well, um, and, and on this thing, I, you know, I've thought about it too. And I started when I started the sh the show, and I started it was the mainly Pinterest tip show. And if you're starting an HOA, you know, what was great for me, I found four guys who had bigger followers than I did, and so I just drafted off those guys, and it was great. And so going even back to the question about panels, um, we we work really well together. I mean, we do. We have a guest on. We kind of have. I have some questions in the case there's dead air. But most of the time, is I go and I'll pass it. I'll say, Wade, what do you think? Mike, what do you think? And they have questions ready too. And so we pretty much run down the panel, and that's our show. And it's 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 been great. I started the Manly Pinterest Tip Show because I wrote an article about a Manly Pinterest Tip because it was a thing. You know, no guys are on Pinterest, and then it just turned into a show. Thought people thought it was a great idea. They loved it. And Brilliant, so, by the way. Oh, thanks. And so anyway. It was. It took off. It was great. It was fun to do. Um, thank you, Brian. <laughs> and um, and so, and I, my whole goal was to be known. I, you know, I wanted people to know who Jeff C was, and so that's why I did it under a profile because there was that whole page versus profile thing. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna relaunch the because now we have the Manly Show because I wanted to talk things other than Pinterest. And so what we try to do is one show do some social media business thing and then do like last the time before last we did a cooking show which was just fun and so we kinda try to mix it up that way but I'm gonna go back and relaunch the mainly Pinterest tips show as just me interviewing somebody and doing a podcast and that will be probably a profile just the same kinda thing underneath the Jeff C brand or whatever so I like it. that's kinda that's kinda my story and I'll, I will I give so much props to uh, uh, 
um, Ronnie Bencer. If you even thinking about doing a show, join his master uh, mastery group because it is yes. so so much worth any amount of money you pay for it. Um, and then the hosts, we all all have kind of our own little back channel of talking. Mia has helped me out so much. You know, I've been able to help her with some stuff. I mean, so there's this whole community, and and if you're interested in that, you know, reach out and, and ask some questions because that's what I did. I, you know, Mia will ping me, hey, I don't know how to do this, and I'll go, hey, Mia, how did you get a sponsor right. doing this way? And so there's this kind of community that we have that's been really, I think, unlike any other network that you have is with Google+. Plus. So. And, it, and it's funny because we're all doing shows, so you would think we were being super competitive, but it's it's all on this commensurate level. I feel like we're we're asking each other questions. We don't feel like we're getting that, hey, can I pick your brain thing that w as consultants we all cringe at, death by coffee. It's right. more of like I've got this this group of what my my bestie boys, bestie boys and girls that I can go to, yeah, and say, hey, and what do you think about this idea? What if I shift this, or did you see this when you watched my show? So. It's it is very yeah it's a, it's a it's a warm place to be, and and it's there is I mean I what Chef said at the beginning I thought was great was that it's not as hard as it looks but it's a lot harder than it looks the kind of <laughs> it, you know it's yeah it is it's it's scary when you get up there that's like I said I don't run the I didn't run the comet tractor when I first started because I didn't want to worry about it but mm -hmm. you know think through you were talking about branding think through what your goal is mine was to to build an audience when I first started and so that that shifted and that's why I started the Manly show um, right. but it, how do I say this without sounding bad but be professional oh, just say it. <laughs> be prof I mean I work hard if you look at my event page everything matches I have I have a, a custom thumbnail when I have my trailer I have my brand at the top my yeah. my profile picture is that think that stuff through because yes. that is your branding. Um, there's stuff that you and, and make sure when you're done with your show, you go back and you tag it correctly on YouTube comments because you want to be crown. Yes. I mean, so I, I I get frustrated seeing people sometimes just throwing up stuff and they get mad it doesn't work. You know, think yeah. it. I mean, you gotta you gotta think it through. I mean, it's it's kind of like. It's like you know I say this all the time about content marketing, but it, it it transcends to anything that you're doing. This stuff works. Like hangouts, if you want to grow your personal brand, this works incredibly well. But you, it, but it's work. That's the thing. Like hangouts <laughs> work, but they're work. That's you know there's no like easy solution to to doing a hangout. Like the technical side is relatively easy. And actually, um, Kim asked a question about. Uh, some of the equipment, right? Yeah, yeah. This is, I mean, it's it, everyone has a different setup. I use a, I have a little mic that I bought for seventy-five bucks on an arm that I paid seventy-five bucks for, and right. I use the the um, camera on my Mac. So my setup really isn't that crazy. Um, it's mostly the fact that you have to dedicate yourself and be willing to come back over and over again. As I've that's, learned this with the podcast, that's... and I've learned it with the Hangouts, mm -hmm. it's consistency. Your audience wants to know that you're going to keep coming back, and 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 that's how they build trust around you. When you show up once a month, and then you're like, oh, then your next episode, the first 20 minutes of it is, oh, sorry for not being here, or I have 15 excuses why I didn't do a show last month. <laughs> you know, your audience doesn't want to hear that stuff. You know, yeah. they're there to 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 connect with you and learn and grow right alongside you. And when, you know, you can't dedicate yourself to the platform. You can't expect results because, you know, the thing about me is show. You know what you're going to get. You're going to get infotainment. You're going to have a good time. You know, you're going to learn something. You're going to laugh. And it's every Friday. And occasionally you have those Saturday shows, so a little mm -hmm. extra once in a while. And it's right. like they know they're going to get that, so, every, so more and more people keep coming back. But if you were to skip two weeks, all right. of a sudden they would be like, mm, I don't know anymore, right? Like, you know, I, am I going to get that same thing? And I just went through that um, this week because I'm, I, to be honest with you, I'm trying to decide what to do about the, about this Friday. It's Fourth of July. I was thinking um, the same so, thing. Exactly. So why don't y'all? Yeah. So Chef, well, let's ask our audience too what they think. Should we do something on Saturday? Are people going to be around on Friday? I don't. I don't know. So it's interesting. But Ryan, you're totally right. I was thinking that. I was like, you know, since I started the show, knock on glass, wood, whatever, I haven't um, missed a show yet, and it is, it's a crap ton of work um, to be consistent, but what does help, and I was thinking this, because you know, Denise Wakeman and I did this webinar this week about 
Shining and, and Shining as an HOA host and putting that together, I have to say I had a little bit of a reality check this week of like, wow, <laughs> that's a lot of work to even, you know, write it down when you get when you get into the groove, but I'll tell you what has helped me, and that's what we did in our webinar was um, process maps. Of like you yeah. just once you get that process down. And I'm not saying I do it every time. And Brian, we had a great conversation again. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Ryan gave me a little little hand holding yesterday, talking about sort of changing up some of my processes a little bit. But um, once you do get that process, it is a lot easier, and then you are consistent, and everybody knows what to expect. Even if you bobble a little bit, and maybe don't you know do the blog post right away. But you know, I've got like the back crap crazy. I get that out by you know my post by every Sunday. But once I got my process down, that helped. A lot, and I literally yeah. have a nerdy Excel spreadsheet. And you're building up brand equity. Oh, I'm sorry, Chef. Yeah, no, it's yeah. okay. I was gonna say, can you explain a little bit more about that process map for some of the people that may not really understand what it is? Sure. I mean, and you, you guys probably have one too. What's interesting is it's sort of a double track. You're not only process that you're you've got this process that you work with your guests, but then setting up your event as well. So you're keeping your guests going. Um, you get them set up, and then you then I set up the event, and then I uh, share the event and I remind them to share the event and then I talk with them before the show about what we're gonna do. I don't overmanage the process because I, I do find if I set things up too strictly, probably the only time I've really been very specific on a show, look at my crown moving around, um, was the, pu the publishing one because I knew there's so many people so I was a little more specific like guys we need to cover this and this and this but I don't, I don't overmanage it because that kind of kills the creativity if you tell, if you're, if you're too like Thank you. <laughs> That's my favorite that you do. We need a plus one thing. Um, but then I also, so it's literally like a spreadsheet that says, okay, um, like my show, I kind of call it, you know, have you ever heard of them talk about Saturday Night Live? Like the culmination, you think it, it's like the culmination of Saturday night and the process starts immediately on Sunday morning. Same thing for me. The show ends on Friday and a whole process starts, plus one. -ing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the new Circloscope, by the way, because that makes my world so much easier. Please go sign up for Circloscope. Also, a giant, that gets five plus ones. Um, but uh, And then I literally am like, okay, Sunday morning, I've got to do this. And then I then and so I go through my little checklist, and then it helps me because then I'm, I'm posting to my page on on Monday. I'm making a Canva photo of my guests, and then I'm doing maybe a Pinterest board, or and it helps because there's a lot of steps if you want to make it successful it's just not me showing up on Friday and yeah. you know yeah. hitting the clap button and I think sorry that, I go on too long. no but I, I'm gonna interrupt you um, I think that it's important too that you will you will screw up and be able to roll with the punches yes. don't if you fail I mean me a dog shamed me right before the show came on because I joined the, the hangout at the cocktail party and I had the stupid rookie mistake of something was running and they were getting echo and somebody had to mute me and I was but that stuff's gonna happen, and you, oh, you do. See, if you're prepared, though, you can handle it, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I just hung my head in shame and went on. Um, we giggle. So, yeah, but it, I mean, it, it, the, the thing, you just those things are gonna happen. You know, learn from them, move on, and you'll be better next time. And so another piece is uh, too that you know, Jeff. The thing is too, you've built up a lot of brand equity, right? So you've done it right and dedicated yourself, and people know that you take it seriously. So when right. you do have a trip up. People are like, oh, okay, no big deal. We yeah. know that Jeff's working hard, and he's yeah, probably going to fix it. And I think that a lot of people, if you if you if you haven't established that trust with your audience and with the people that you work with, then those mistakes aren't tolerated. But if you do work hard and you do try to commit yourself to this, then when you have a hiccup, no big deal. People just roll with it. Oh, I looked at my Tesla show. Hello, <laughs> yeah, I was I was out speeding the internet because I was went from sixty to ninety one, and it made me so happy. So, <laughs> but I was uh, seriously that that thing is I'm st I'm still not over it yet. But yeah, I was worried a little bit. I got back and I was like, man, were people going to be like, woo, that was a little messy? And they're like, no, you took a chance and got into a car. So yeah, yeah. you know, you that's just like, that was like the cooking show. I mean, I'm. Yes. We did that. It was just a big. I mean, we were switching cameras, you know. It's so yeah. fun, though. Was, Everybody loves like, what you guys do. And I was like, Chef, this is so hard. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, oh. Chef, you know, he was on it, and he. I mean, I, you know, I was cooking a steak, and he whips out lobster tails, and you know, and I'm. It was just, it was just fun to do, and you know, those things sometimes didn't work right, and the camera wouldn't switch right. I mean, but you know what? It was fun, and you, you like, like your your show with the Tesla thing. It was groundbreaking, and and people like to see that every once in a while. 
Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, here's a perfect example, right? I had, and I've told this story. I know Mia, you've heard this story at least. I had um, um, Sue Zimmerman on my show. Twenty minutes into the show, she's gone. Literally mid sentence, blank screen. I have forty seven people on the call. I don't know what to do, so I just start talking. I'm just just <laughs> talking head into the camera. I start asking questions. You know, I said, hey, "Who has a question about the show?" There were 49 people on the call when she came back four minutes later. So four minutes of complete, you know, what could just be bedlam, show over, hair Mm -hmm. on fire, and no one left. They stuck around. And I think the reason is, and and I'm not trying to be like humble brag here, but I think the reason is that (laughs) I I do, you know, they're they're used to a set process. They're used to the show going right. So when something Mm -hmm. does go wrong, no big deal. Right. And they said in there, they're like, Ryan's got this. Like, that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got this. It's all you know, good. What they don't realize is that I'm, like, dripping with sweat. The sweat's rolling down my back because I'm like, oh, my just God. Just wet your me. pants. You, you know, know <laughs> she comes back on. What, what am I going to do? You just got to be that duck. You know, calm and cool on the top, paddle like crazy. I love that analogy, yeah. right? Yeah. Swimming away on the bottom. Absolutely. We have a cool Would question you? here, and um, I don't know if I'm, I'm, like, completely bogarting oh, you. Yeah, go ahead. Um... Um, uh, what is one piece of advice you would give a new HA, HOA host and, and really talking about how long should a show be? I think this is a good question because a lot of people get hung up on how long a show should be. Yeah. I do an hour-long show most of the time with just one person on the call, so I don't think that there's any correlation between number of guests and length of show. It, the show should be as long as you can deliver value. That's my thing, but I want to hear from everybody else. Yeah, I do. And I, oh, go ahead. Uh, sorry, uh, I was gonna say our show's a half hour usually, and we go and we have four guys and a guest sometimes two, and it's just the way you heard the cats. I mean, it just depends. I mean, mm-hmm. you want to keep it going, and you know, and and we've done it, so we know how to to go. And I and I and know if somebody doesn't, I try to get everybody airtime. And so if somebody's not talking, I'll go, okay, Mike, what do you think about this? And because I want it to be fair, and so yes. you have to learn how to do that. And Mia, if you want to watch her show, she is the she is a master at that. So. I'm a trying, but yeah, you guys definitely have it down. I was just thinking about this, Jeff. It's like we kind of have we have what are called panel shows, but we're the absolute opposite because you have, and I love this because you you get your your groove down with you guys. You guys are like a little, yeah, little little tr- you know traveling team. You know each other's nuances of like who's going to kind of pop in, and then the the variation is the one or two guests that come in, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's yeah. awesome. And then mine is kind of the opposite. I've got me, you know, wrangling a circuit. Yeah. Which is always fun, but I, yeah. you know, on on that question with the time, it really, it really just depends. I've seen some very strong opinions about it about people. I don't know. We were on some thread, Sheffy, and you guys might have been on it too. And somebody was like, about one hour, and Chef and I were like, we ain't changing. You know, they were a little kind of dogging on the one hour show, and it's just, it's just what works for us. Um, but then again, our food and booze show is a half an hour. And we've always been able to keep it at that. It just seemed to work. So I think it's just more of a you know, testing thing. Like, this is what I love too. I think all of us have done it. I think Jeff, you've done it. I've done it. We all have like, we start one way and then we shift. I mean, I, I literally was like, you know, I don't want it to be this social media power chat anymore. This is a very saturated niche. I want to open it up. Other people are doing it better than I am. And I just made it into the Mia Connect power chat and that worked better. So you can switch. You can start sure. it at an hour or a half an hour or 20 minutes or whatever you want. You do whatever you want. You just well, you know, have all, something in mind, but make sure you're also clear about it. Because some people who've had changes and, and then don't make and don't keep people notified, you, you want to keep your audience notified. You just communicate the changes to your audience. A lot of times they'll just follow. You know, they don't care. They just want to be part of it. You know, when you They're I think like, when okay. you, yeah, when you when you make a change and you don't let people know, I think they feel like. They feel less like you're a part of them, right? Like a big part of doing these things is is you're just as much a community member as the people who are watching your show. And I think when you make changes and don't communicate it, it's almost a little disrespectful to your audience. Mm-hmm. Yes. And nobody does it better than you, Mia. So just drop that one. Okay, you are you are the queen <laughs> of, of, of HOAs. And uh, Mike Alton has Thank just you, written a blog post, and I wanted to put the subject up. Love it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Thank you for saying it. You got to say it. <laughs> Humble brag, sweatpants, bogarting. Those are just, you probably wrote three blog posts actually with those three topics. So, thank you for that, Mike. Uh, and he also had a question. Let me pop that up there. Is uh, the spot on what you were talking about? 
give thought to your long-term strategy. One easy question I ask business owners when this topic comes up is where do they see their business in five to ten years? If their plan is to build a business and then to sell it, then the brand name has to be the priority above the personal. So he was talking about, I just want to thought that was kind of important. I like uh, that. And then I want to mention Lisa Ingalls. Hey, girl. She says, I keep my show at 20 minutes following the TED Talks format. People seem to like it. That's awesome. And I do love the picture at the top. How fun is that? That is. Yeah. Yay. R Ryan, um, now since you went to podcast, and I know a lot of people want to keep it at 30 minutes because they want to, they're doing the thing where they're taking it and making it a podcast. Have you had any problem with people? I mean, yours is an hour. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I, I am. I can give a crap how long a show is. The show could be five minutes long. It could be four hours long. All that matters is if you're able to deliver value for that amount of time. What I don't like about putting hard restrictions on time is that I feel like then you're trying to fit the value into the time frame instead of just like there's one rule on my show. I tell every guest. I've said this live on the air. If you go off on a tangent, you have to stay on that tangent. Like I want to capture that value even if it's not directly related to the topic of the show. And if that takes us from 45 minutes to 57 minutes or an hour and 10 minutes, I don't care. I just want to capture as much value from that person or persons who are on my show as I can. So like if I, I've had shows where the person didn't really want to be there, they can only give me 27 minutes of value and at 30 minutes we wrapped up and we were done. And that's perfectly fine. They had 27 minutes of value in them, and we moved on, and, and there's, there's no problem with that. I've had other people that literally just like, I had other things to do, or we could have kept talking, you know. And so I, I really, I don't have any problem with people having a format. I just don't think people should try to put themselves in a box with a certain amount of time, like 30 minutes, we're done. If you have one more great question, ask that great question, and if it takes you to 40 minutes... You know what people are going to do if your show runs too long? They're going to hit pause, and as soon as they have time, they're going to hit play again and finish the show. There's no, That's like, right. my car ride is 25 minutes, so I'm only going to listen to 25 minutes and not finish your show. They're just going to listen to it another time. Right. Preach it. Soapbox. I'm now off my soapbox. No, it was no, that, that's, that's awesome. the mic. And the key is you provide value. I mean, you, I mean that's, it's chock full, and if you sit there and sit there and go, um, uh, okay, you know, then people are going to leave. But if you're... That's right. Yeah. If you're pulling it together, then it's going to, yeah. Well, that's, that's what Mia said about prep, right? It's all, mm -hmm. there is so much, like you can, so there's two, I have two things here. You can prep without it being staged. That's a big thing. People are like, oh, I don't want to do a ton of prep because I want it to be natural. Cool, I'm down with that. But you should know at least everything, every 10,000 foot thing that your guest has done. Like you should have an idea yes. because... You need to be able to pull from that stuff. You should have a page full of notes like I wrote down before this hangout of things that I wanted to touch on if we, you know, if, if we started to fizzle, I could be like, oh, Mia, um, how has your personality helped you grow your show and how can people leverage their own personality? That's one of my little notes that I have here. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That little bit of prep, <laughs> nice. that yeah. little bit of prep is what takes your show and fills those little gaps um, so I call them grout joints. Yes, you uh -huh. need to be That's staged good. with questions for it to still feel very natural, and that prep is a big part uh -huh. of that. And then yeah, yeah I'll, I'll bring up. Probably, oh, see now I get to I get to talk over you, Jesse. Mm. <laughs> Up to now, probably the the one show that I did the most prep for. I almost did too much prep just to give you like a, a story. And I, you guys have heard me probably tell this one before. Is when I did the guy Kawasaki interview. So, um, and and Greg had to have what I call the coach talk with me, the the tough talk, because I was like, dude, I'm in over my head. I really did. I was like, I pr I almost prepped too much. I had pages and pages of notes just just because I just. I was just like, it's Guy Kawasaki. I was nerding out. Um, and I was like, honey, I'm in over my head. He's like, I've never heard you say that. You got this. It's all good. And then I ended up throwing out all my notes because they just, Peg and Guy were having a blast. And it yeah. was so much fun. I mean, but I was. That was a really good show. I thought you did a really good job with that, actually. Thank you. I really, I just, but I do you remember me seeing me just throw like on <laughs> my like, F it. You know, if you guys want to go, because I think they, didn't don't get to do that as much either. They they kind of have to follow a format. So that's just my style of it too. So I really want to encourage everybody out there to kind of find 
your style. There's enough out there for everybody to bring your own style to it. Because, you know, honestly, at that point, Guy and Peg had been on, they'd been on your show, Jeff. They'd been on, you know, I was at the long end of, of a bunch of HOA HOAs. And uh, so I was like, oh, my gosh, how am I going to pull this off? They've, they've, you know, they're probably talked out and, you know, just kind of use my own style for it. But I will say it was a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> That's a hard thing sure. to do sometimes. Interview mm -hmm. somebody when you know that they've been on a lot of other shows recently. Um, it must be like the old school, like when, when like talk show circuit. Yeah. I, I'm only thinking of it as a talk show circuit when somebody's coming out with a new movie or a new book and they've been on all these different things. But that's kind of how it felt, yeah. Yeah. Um, can I? I want to ask a question or pull a question up from Dustin, who says um, he was Dustin. he's pushing back on the consistency issue, and then my talking about the length of the show can vary per show. Um, and so my response to that, is, and it's an excellent question because I actually ask myself this question sometimes. But what I've come down to is, I have I have groomed my audience to understand that the length of the show is going to be inconsistent, and that. It's, yes. I'm going to push as long as I can, and as You're soon as we hit the end of the value train, I'm <laughs> pulling the ripcord and we're bailing out. And I think that, you know, what, <laughs> the inconsistency is part of the consistency of the show, in a way. Like, that may sound kind of weird, but um, mm -hmm. I just have, you know, basically I haven't said it's going to be 30 or an hour. I've said I'm going to go until there's no more value, and then we're going to jump. And, uh, you know, I think that people have gotten used to that format. Um I guess that's the best way I can describe it. Although, yeah. that or I'm completely full of crap. The inconsistency is your consistency. Yeah. That's why I said he's consistently inconsistent, and they're used to it, right? Yeah. But then they'll, they, that'll be kind of fun, too, to see it. Um, and, and on the flip side, Chef and I have done it, uh, too, of, like, they know that you're um, if you're going, then they better stay then, too. Like, if you're still going, that you they, they trust that you're going to keep going because you you can see that there's some good juice with it, right? Yeah. So they, they trust you to say, okay, Ryan knows that it's it's time to stop the show. And then with Jeff, they trust you guys that you've got a half an hour, but you're always going to get in that half an hour exactly what you're yeah. supposed to. And with me, they, they I always kind of cue it up too. I'm like, all right, you guys, we got to go. We're, we got to go over to Chef's because Chef's show is on right after mine. And if I go a little bit longer, it's not because I don't love Sheffy. It's because I they know that we need to stay on there too. So you just choose choose what works for you. And I uh, think that, you know, what I, you know, we do. Jeff, talking to Jeff C, nodding is worth a thousand words. Best comment so far. <laughs> I had to pull that up, Jeff. Before we go. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be bearded bobbleheads coming out. Um, <laughs> that, what I was going to say was that, um, you know, what I, what we do is, we go back to the format, back to the format is we have, I have Evernote pulled up with questions in case there is dead air. Yes. And we can just kind of like what Ryan has, you know, that he's got his notes. But also, um, you know, in the format thing, I think that, you know, we we try to keep it at a half hour. But like what Ryan said, if there's some great questions, we keep going. Um, and uh, I think also we're, as I pull it back to branding your HOA, I think that, you know, be you try not to copy somebody. Be, in, you know, be individual. Be your own individual. And there's some. Everybody's got a story to tell. And I think people say, "Well, I can't be like Mia Voss, I cannot, so I'm not going to do an HOA." Please you know. don't. <laughs> but I think everybody's got a story to tell and has something. So don't let that hinder, you know, what you're doing too. So. Yeah, I think you know, I and I've I've had people say that I'm like, don't, you know, like I I've had I had to struggle with when I first started my shows. And look who showed up, by the way. He wanted to get in on it. Little Bob Voss. You know, I started my show so Bob Voss could be on the show. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but I, I had to struggle with that. When I first started doing shows, I was like, oh, my gosh, everybody's really serious, and I need to be this, and I tried to be that, and that didn't, mm -mm. didn't it didn't work well. It, I wasn't being true to myself, but it, it was a little tough in the beginning of, like, these people probably think I'm an idiot, you know, <laughs> so had to go with that. But the Evernote, good point on that, Jeff. I don't know if you heard me typing when we were talking yesterday, Ryan, but that was me putting everything you were saying into Evernote. Yeah. I, I think believe. that, you know, it, it's really funny because the person, I actually did, I wrote I wrote down that question that I asked about personality because I think that it's very, um, you know, like I watched your show one time when I was first starting and I was like, man, you know, look at the way, you know, you have the hashtags going and you're calling people out in the middle of the show and, you know, and, and doing all this different stuff and very engaged with your audience. And, you know, not that I tried to do that, but I, in, in doing my show, I was like, I just don't have that ability to 
you know, and, and it doesn't really fit my format to be like, oh, I see this person and fist bump and, and like that stuff is you. And for me to try to do it in my show, as much as I'm extremely comfortable with Hangouts, it just right. wouldn't fit, right? So like if I tried to do all the different things, that's that's your show. That's not my show. So I think that like like uh, Lisa Engels has been talking about doing the 20, 20 minutes and that's her show format. That's awesome. That's yeah. her format. If you look at her show and you say, wow, I really like her show. I'm going to do it just like that. Unless you're Lisa Engels, it's not going to be the same thing. Like you got to figure right. out what works for you. And and I and I wasn't trying to bash people who have a um, specific a length to their show because like yep. uh, like John Lee Dumas who I was saying thirty minutes it's the exact same questions exact same format every day that works for him um, I'm just you know my my advice is what works for me so yeah I just think take the little pieces that work for you use those pieces throw the rest out and and build your own little thing that's that's you and your show and that's how your people are going to remember you. Can I um, can I tell you what my motto is? And I know you're gonna love it. Be yourself unless you can be Khaleesi, and then always be Khaleesi. <laughs> and if you don't know Game of Thrones, go look it up. <laughs> and that's for boys and girls. <laughs> yeah. No, that's very true. But you know what's fun, Ryan? Is that, that yeah? You don't have to be the goofy, uh, the fist bump thing. But then you can come over to my show and do it. Yes. Now, even if that's not how you run your shows, I love to get people over to my show, and they just get to have a good time. Yeah. And then they, they get to showcase their smarts, too. But then, you know, we've all got these different styles. So for people who want to go on shows, go come ask us. Come on our shows. Yeah. And we'll show you. We like to have fun. Yeah. We do. That's a, that's a good go, – go ahead. Yeah, so Mike Alton is talking is talking about uh, all things a Greek god Apollo and all things practice moderation, but even moderation must be practiced in moderation. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure I, I don't know if you meant that funny, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's like you're doing spontaneity right? has its like time and real. place, right? <laughs> yeah, spontaneity has its time and place. Good. How do you guys find guests? I'm interested in that. Like what is your process? That's a question I get a lot is how yeah. do you get guests on your show? How do you choose guests? All that kind of stuff. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, Jeff, you too. I mean, uh, we haven't heard too much from you, but you do as many or more hangouts than any of us. So, like, mm -hmm. how do you choose your guests? Do you have a process? Do you have a waiting list? How far out? All that good stuff. I think that's really interesting stuff for hangouts. Well, for me, I mean, I, I look for new people that are coming on the Plus yes. uh, as long as well as seasoned ones because I like to use it. For me, Good Day Google Plus is a networking tool, and that's how I view it. I mean, I love to have viewers. It doesn't break my heart when I don't have as many as I had the week before, but I pull in people and I introduce them to each other and yes. feel that this is I'm making my network larger and larger. And, and one day, in you know, in the terms of the Godfather, is what can I do for you? You know, <laughs> you know. So it, it's a matter of one hand washes the other, and you know, we help each other grow. Uh, and and I get to know people a little bit better. But I mean, I, I'll reach out to guests, and people say no. You know, I'm appalled that they do, but they do. You know, it's like, yeah. So, you know, uh, and you just have to just keep searching for the people that fit. And and the big thing is, is not everybody's going to fit into your format. Mm -hmm. and don't try and make them fit. Yeah, that's True. really good. I love that. I usually try to have a topic, you know, and then I'll try to match people. It doesn't matter how, as long as they are a thought leader or they, they're making, I'm seeing their posts or their comments, then I'll ask them to be on the show. And I usually, I mean, it's usually people I've already interacted with already because you, you don't want to get somebody on there who's never been on a hangout. It's like, you know... <laughs> Uh, Jeff C. Close-up GIF. That's right. uh, can you make that happen? Go. <laughs> Somebody. Uh, so I mean, you want to you want to you want to kind of screen them a little bit, I think. But um, usually, it's just people who I think I've heard them talk before. I'm like, man, they'd be awesome. I want It's usually interest what I have. I'm like, I want to talk to these people. They have a lot exactly. to say. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way, Jeff. I'm I'm theme based is definitely, and then it it is just more. For me, it's just it's kind of a combination of, of Jeff and Sheffy that I love to um, I, I meet. But it's I love to see people connect with one another. So the community connection. I mean, that's that's. I don't know if you guys have sort of a a mission statement, but mine is connecting you to the people and businesses you need to know in Denver and beyond, right? But I've kind of taken the Denver off because it's Google Plus, but that's what's been great. I'll meet people. I'm like, oh, I need to have you on my show. I mean, how fun is that that you've got this platform when you meet cool people who are doing cool things and you're like, 
woo, come on my show. So it can be a combination of I build a theme around a person that I meet and then bring other people in, or I've got the theme. So I do, I do some um, uh, timely type of things. Like I do this health and fitness one a couple times a year. I did it. I started right before Thanksgiving, the eating season. And then I did one in February, and I'll probably would do one in the middle. And then, you know, I did a summertime one and talking about things to – fun stuff to do to relax over the summer. So it kind of it kind of depends. That helps me a lot, too, to start like a, you know, a, a guest calendar that, that goes out. And then sometimes it's just fly by the seat of my pants. Yeah. Here, I have to put this up real quick. I'm sorry. From now on, I'll always think of my golf as moderately <laughs> immoderate. <laughs> <laughs> New stigma for Mike. <laughs> and Lisa Angles awesome. has a question. Yeah, Alan, that's a really good one. Um, on how to get big name guests who may not be on G Plus. I don't know. I'm I jump on that one first. Go ahead. Yeah. I have a very distinct opinion about this, <clears throat> as I do a lot of these things. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, when it comes to big name guests, here is my. I'm gonna jump up on my soapbox for a second. Focus less on the guest name and more on whether they can you they can talk or not. Because I have made Ooh. this mistake before. Not since I've learned the mistake before I came into Google Hangouts. So none of the people who have actually been on my Hangouts have had this issue. But before Hangouts, when I was doing the Skype recordings, I had a couple people on that you would think would be amazing guests with amazing things to say, and they weren't, right? They just weren't interesting. I wasn't big enough for them to give a crap about. They're having a bad day. I have no idea, but the you know so this is what I focus on now. There are enough really awesome people in the world who can who have a camera on their computer who can come on and say really amazing things. That fo I would focus less on big names. If you want them on, all you need to do is email them and say, hey, whatever product you're pushing, you can come on and push it on my show, and they'll come on. I mean, that's how you get big names on your show. It's literally that easy. Right, so it's super easy to get these people on, but think about, listen to other shows. Listen, here's the best indicator: find someone who has a mid to beginner show who's had them on, and listen to their interview on that show. And right. if they come with the goods on that show, you know they'll be good on yours. Because there are some people who have one performance on one caliber. I'm doing a lot of air quotes here. Caliber show, and <laughs> and and then on another show, just show up bag it and get out after they give the URL to their latest thing that they're pushing. So be really careful with big names. It's it's the number one thing that I think people can hurt themselves and their own brand because that interview is a representation of you and your brand. Oh, totally. Did you see me bobblehead the whole time? I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> you watch, you go back and watch it. Like Halfway through your... your uh... Your your shtick here, which I love. It's so true. That that's such a great piece of advice. And I think too is that don't think, um, try not to think that everybody's doing you a favor by coming on your show. Be, be really confident about what you're getting out there, and it kind of it kind of gives you some control. That's right. Plus one on that bad boy, it gives you control, right, guys? So you don't feel like. Oh, and I did. In the beginning, I was like, oh, thanks for coming on, and, and um, which I'm very grateful, don't get me wrong, but I think it's just just be really confident about it that um, that you are offering them to your audience, no matter how big or small. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and Chef does a great job with that. I mean, his, his show oh. is so much of just uh, bringing people together. I mean, you meet so many people, and he he's a, if you have any questions about it, watch his show, because... He makes everybody at ease, and he introduces people, and it always just works. I mean, I was on a sh his show, and it was, I mean, people I you'd think would not go together, and it was just awesome. We were just in there talking, and so I totally agree with what Ryan said. Um, it's just an ask. Ask people. You know, you gotta make have to make a little bit of a chance on some people, but do it, and you, you may be surprised. I, I like that one. Okay. One free qualifier is that I go to when I ask someone, I go to their page and I look to see if they have any YouTube videos. Because hmm. yes. I want to see what they look like in front of a camera. Yeah. And if I don't see any, then I'll contact them. We have to do an HOA first because I have to see how. Yes, they are. I was going to say yeah. that's that's key, Sheffy. Yeah. Go ahead. So you were going to talk about. Oh, Nazim just says how important is humor in HOAs? Have you met me? <laughs> I think we all get it. I think everybody has to in, in, interject just a little bit of uh, levity and humor. Absolutely. And also the lecture class. It's a lecture class if you don't have. Mm. 
I mean, and people learn. This is this is my soapbox. People learn more when they laugh. I mean, they do. It's something about it. It just if there's you don't have to be you know having one liner every time. But if you're funny and people can connect with you through humor, it's huge. I mean, it's just huge. And I'm I'm not the funniest guy, but I'll do stupid yes, things every once in a while. And and it'll and it just it's connection with your audience when you can when you can make them laugh. Part of it is just letting go of your inhibitions and being your real self that you would be with your friends when you go out mm -hmm. and not yeah. having that starched collar kind of I mean like I, I sang on me a show and my wife is going, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> Who are you? you know? So did Mark Trafigan. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I uh, I don't know if you guys saw the show, if you know Fran Harris, that we did a show a couple weeks ago, and she's uh, a former WNBA player. I just want to hold her purse all the time. I have such a girl crush on her. She's so impressive. Um, but she told a story about when she started doing, um, uh, what do you call it, commentary for NBA game or WNBA games. And they said uh, that the guy saw her on the show, and then he saw her hanging out afterwards and hanging out with her friends. And he was like, I need to give you a piece of advice. He's like, you need to be that girl I saw hanging out at the pool with her friends, not the person you were on camera. And he re recognized it, and she immediately switched. Love that story. And just went, wow. Yeah. And it, it really, look, I got bobbleheads. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, it really, it made me bobblehead, too. I was like, oh, boom. So find, mm -hmm. uh, find, find, that, uh, find that Khaleesi. Authenticity, yeah. vulnerability, honesty. I mean, it's the thing about this format is that unlike a blog post where you can kind of like maybe hide some of your true feelings, uh -huh. when you're in front of a camera, everything comes through. Your enthusiasm, your passion, all the things that you have that, that are going on inside you that you can't hide behind the written word, they come through in this format. If yeah. someone says something and you disagree, you might sit, try want to say something, but your face and your is gonna is gonna it's gonna come through. So I think that just understand that that's gonna happen regardless of what you want, and just play to it, and just and yeah. just let it come through, and and people really respond to that. I think. I like Lisa's comment. Great point, Jeff C. HOAs are not about giving a lecture. I've had guests who go into lecture boring. Ah, <laughs> uh, good points, you guys. Well, and we thought we wouldn't have anything to say. I know. We're running close to that hour now. In fact, we just passed it. So uh, I'm going to give one quick pass through, and uh, then we're going to call it quits because i got a, a whole list of other things I have to do on my map. So, uh, Ryan, any last words of advice for people? That's a new bobblehead. For people that, that want to do HOAs <laughs> and improve their branding. Um, get really good at the bobblehead. No. Um, <laughs> I would say that... Just do one. I mean, I, 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 all this like professionalism and stuff. Like, you don't have to start a series. You don't have to just do a one-off show. Find someone you're very comfortable talking to, or a couple people you're comfortable talking to, and do a one-off show first. Just one time, pick a topic that you know a lot about, and and do one, and record it to YouTube. See the way you come across. Feel the experience of it. Try to get some people there, and and just and just do it. And then from there, you can have a better idea of, of what works for you, and, and then you can plan a show. You don't Just because you do a Hangout doesn't have to be some long series. You can do a one-off show, and I think that's a good way to get started. Sounds good. Mia? I say um, on that same loop, go be a guest on some shows too, and then go back and watch it. See how you do. Check out your style. Thank you for that, Ryan. <laughs> and you can also just record them privately on YouTube and yep. watch them and practice a little. Yeah, go to YouTube Live, though. Go, go and make sure that you may think it's private. If you just do a Hangout, you need to go to YouTube Live and start it because it will actually show up. <laughs> I did that when I did my rant on Comcast, and everybody saw it. Which might have been a good thing because you have an excellent picture now. It's looking good now, I just say. They, uh, they, they heard me. <laughs> Along with others. And Jeff, any uh, closing Oh, just uh, I, I always have to go last, and I have to scrape the bottom of the barrel. But uh, <laughs> but the uh, what Brian and Mia said, you know, go practice. I would say if you have any questions, uh, check out Ronnie Bencer's free videos on HOAs. Yes. Uh, and then if you really are serious about it, join his mastery group. I can't say that enough. Uh, and ask questions to people in that you see doing hangouts, and they probably will answer you. Don't don't harangue them and bother them if they don't answer right away. But, you know, if they have questions... Get the Heisman questions. on that one. <laughs> yeah. But, well, you know, we, 
we, we they will answer your question and try to help. I mean, that's yes. that's the beauty of this community, and um, and just go out there and try it. Excellent. All right, guys, thank you so much for being on the second session of our conference that's running all day long, and we'll be back at. Uh, I don't even know what time it is, 2 o'clock. We're back at 2 o'clock. Not a good sign. It's still early uh, with our next session, and I hope you can stop by. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today, a lot of learning, as Mia would say, get your learn on. Yes. And a little bat crap crazy thrown in for good measure. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for showing up today. Uh, it was great to have you here, guys. Always a pleasure. So have a great thanks, day. And thanks, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, thanks, Jeff.